Hello and welcome to this polymer clay tutorial. So if we have a little look at all the things that you can make with the polymer clay kits. So we've got the, the flowers, the hearts, the bacon and eggs and the pandas. So also in the kit you'll be getting some of the findings. So you'll get some jump rings, a length of chain, the key ring or bag charm clips, the ball head pins, the shepherd hook earring findings, and the clasps. You'll also get your polymer clay. And your polymer clay, it's a great medium. It's a non-toxic clay made from particles of PVC. And you can bake that in your oven at home. So all of the instructions come in the little booklet here. So that tells you about the polymer clay and talks to you about preparing the clay and about how you can bake it. And you can bake the clay in your oven at home at 275 Fahrenheit, 130 Celsius for a maximum of 30 minutes. So all of your information about the, about the clay is in here. So if we start off and we'll make the panda. So what we're going to do is we're going to take sections of our polymer clay. And every time that we work with the polymer clay, we want to make sure that we condition it properly. So conditioning just means that we're going to rub it in between our fingers and our hands so that it doesn't crack whilst we're working with it. So I'm going to cut to make the panda. I'm going to take, you can see that the, the, the clay is actually put into quarters. So I'm going to cut off one of the quarters here. I'm going to cut that in half and half again. So to condition the clay, I'm going to work first of all with the white and then I'd wash my hands and then I'm going to work with the black. Because if you don't wash your hands in between, what can happen is that the colours can mix. So to work with the polymer clay, I've got, I've just got an old tile from at home and I've got a variety of little tools that you can use. So either polymer clay tools or you can find things in the home. Cocktail sticks and straws are very good and different cutters. So I'm just going to start to condition the clay. So I'm just squeezing it and warming the clay. And what you're looking for is so that when we press down that it stops cracking. I'm just going to knead it slightly and warm it up so it's a lot more malleable. You can also roll it in between your palms. So it's, you know, you need to make sure that you've got nice clean hands as well. So everything goes onto the, onto the clay. So to make our panda, what we're going to need is we need to have two balls of white clay. So I'm going to take the two balls, do exactly the same with this one here, I'm going to roll it into a ball. So the two, the two balls that I'm going to use for the head and the body are going to be of equal size. So again, I'm going to roll and make two balls. So I'm going to leave one just as a round ball and that's going to be my body. So on the other one for the head, so I've made a round ball and I'm just going to put an, use my finger and I'm just going to start to make an indent just to give it a slight curve to suggest a chin. I'm just going to go over and just smooth that out. So we've now got our head. 
Our last little bit with the, the white and the eyes, we just need to take a little section and we're going to roll that and roll it into a little sausage shape. I'm going to cut that in half. And with those two halves, I'm just going to roll them together to make two smaller balls and they will become the eyes. I'm just going to pop all of that together. So you can see what I've done is I've done all of the white section first so that then when I work with the black section, I'm not likely to mix the two colours. So we've got those two and the little eyes already. So I can now start working with the black. So with the black, again, I'm going to roll it in my hand just to condition it and warm it up. So our first little bit, I'm going to roll it into, again, into the sausage shape. And I cut it in half, pop that to the side and cut it in half again. So I'm going to work with this little bit here. So again, I'm going to cut that in half and start to roll a ball. So every time I work, I tend to sort of cut it in half, half again into smaller amounts, and then cut that into the size that I need. So for this, this little section, I'm going to work and I'm going to make some ears. So again, I'm going to cut that in half so that I know I've got two equal pieces. And a good way to test is if you roll them together, you can generally feel and see whether they're the same size. And if one is a little bit bigger, you can just take a little bit off, pop that to the side and start rolling again. So we've now got two balls for the ears. So we'll pop those to the side as well. So we'll next move on to our other little piece of black. So for this one, again, I'm going to cut it. I'm going to cut in half again. And again, I'm going to start off with two little balls. We're going to make part of the eyes now. I'm going to check that they're the same sort of size. Now I want to turn the, the balls into almost more um, of a kidney bean shape. So I'm just going to roll slightly so it's a bit more of a tube. I'm just going to take something, you can either use a cocktail stick or the tip of the pen and I'm just going to put a slight indent in so that when I squash down a little bit I'm getting that kidney bean shape. So we've got one. And again, it's a bit more of a tube. With our tool, a slight indent and squash down. So again, because we've got the two pieces, you can compare the two and we can come back to those. So in this little section, I'm just going to finish the eyes. So I've got a really small amount of the black. And again, I'm going to cut in half. And these will become pupils. So again, I'm just going to roll those two together and pop them to the side. So we've now, we're going to create the arms and the legs. So I'm going to take, I'm just going to pop those ones together because I want to create an oval now. So I need two ovals that are roughly the same sort of size. So I'm going to roll into, back into the ball, pop down and cut in half. So the first half I'm going to make back into the ball. I'm going to take the ball now and just roll it slightly so it becomes more of an oval shape. I'm going to pop the oval shape down. I'm going to cut down the center long ways. I 
and pop those to the side. And I do exactly the same with the other half. And roll it into the ball. Taper the end slightly to make a bit more of an oval or an egg shape. Pop down and cut lengthways. So with these two now, these are going to be the feet. So I'm going to just pop them onto the, the flat side down and join them together. And this time I'm just going to pinch ever so slightly at the one end. And these are going to become his feet and his legs. So you can see we've got a slight dip going down. So with the last piece of black that we've got, I'm just going to take a tiny little bit off. Slightly larger than we made for the pupils and roll that into a ball. I'm going to take the little ball, I'm going to pinch just between my thumb and my finger and push down with this finger to create almost like a triangle and pinch down. So we've got a nose. So we've now got all of our sections to create the panda. So now we're going to build our panda. So I'm going to start, I'm going to take the, the body. And what you can do to give it a little bit more stability is you can use the head pins that are in the pack just to give it a little bit more stability when you pop the head on. So to do that, what you might need to do is trim the head pin down, but we'll see how high it goes. So we've got the body, and we've got the head, and you can see the differences with the indent. I'm just going to get the head pin and pop that all the way down into the ball of the body. And have a look with the head, so you can see we need to cut that down. I'm going to take our snips and just trim off. So now we can pop the head on and position the head. So our next bit is to add in some of the features. So we've got our, our ears. So what we're going to do, we're going to add a little bit more detail to the ears. We're just going to Pop using either your cocktail stick or your tool and just to create an indent in the ears. So I'm just pushing down just to create a bit more detail on the ears. So I'm going to push down and again just to create the indent. I'm going to position the ears. I'm just pushing quite firmly so I get a nice join. Take the other one and again push down. So now we can start to add some detail to the face. And I'm just going to pick some of these up with the little tool. So I'm going to start to layer up the eyes. The first thing I'm going to pop on are the kidney bean shaped black sections. I'm just going to pop one on and the second one. And again, I'm just pushing down so that they sit nicely together. So the next layer the white section and again I'm going to position the white and this is where you can really add and create different expressions to your panda by how you position the eyes. So again I'm just pushing down so they're nice and secure. I'm going to take the pupils now and add in Push down 
and do the second eye and push down. So you can see it's really starting to take shape now. So our last little bit for the face is the nose. I'm going to pop that on, try and centre it a little bit. And the good thing with the polymer clay, if you don't like where you've put it, you can just peel it off, reposition it, and then push it back down. So we've now got the face complete. So now we're going to move to the arms. So this is where we've got our two halves of the oval that we created. So we've got the flat edge. So I'm going to start just around just at the back and push the flat edge onto and curve around the body. Push it in nice and firmly. And we're going to do the other one. So again with the flat edge and pop round and really push down so that they're stuck together. So you've now got the arms. So for our last section, I'm going to take the little feet. So these are the feet we created with the cutting the oval again in half and just tapering down on that side. I'm going to add in and pop our feet on. We can mould round and just position the feet. So you can see you've got your panda. And what you can add in is you can add in another head pin or some of the little loops and just poke in at the top and then bake in the oven. And that's your panda. So you're going to have lots and lots of clay left over. So another option that you can do is to mix the clay together and create the heart shape pendant. So we'll have a look at how we do that now. I've got lots of clay left over. So again, I'm going to take both of the clays and I'm just going to roll them into sausage shapes. And what I'm going to be doing is mixing it together but not so much so that I create a grey colour. I want to keep it so that it's definite colours. So again, I'm just going to start to mix the two together. So I'm just going to keep swirling it round and squeeze down. Just going to keep swirling and swirling. And you're going to keep mixing like this and twisting it around until you create a ball that's really mixed up. So keep bringing it round and swirling. So what you're going to end up with is a ball where it's all marbled together. So what we want to do now is we want to use, so I've just cut a couple of pieces of card just from an old cardboard box. We want to turn the ball into more of a cube or a rectangular shape. So we want to get rid of the smooth curved edges. So all I'm doing is I'm just pushing the ball in between the card just to create straight edges. I'm just pushing down so that I get more of a cube shape. So I'm going to keep pushing from all angles. And you can use old store cards or cardboard, anything that's going to give you those nice straight edges. So you can see now it's more of a cube. So what I want to do is I'm going to take these and I'm going to use a little bit of cling film. So the cling film is going to do a couple of things. It's just going to stop it from sticking and also 
when I start to smooth over it, it'll stop, it, stop my fingerprints from getting onto the clay. So what I want to do is I'm going to cut the, cut the shape now, lengthways, so I'm just going to support here, I'm going to try and cut, if I can, about six slices. So I've got my one, two, so you can see as I start to cut, you can really see all the lovely markings that are within the, in the polymer clay, all the swirls. So I'm going to go three, and I'll keep going. As you can see, they're all a little bit uneven at the moment, but we're going to, what we'll do is we'll roll them out. So on that little section, I'll just add in there. And so two more, and we'll get it so it's nice and even. So I've laid them all out. They're all one on top of each other. So slightly overlapping. Now I'm going to put the cling film over the top. And all I'm going to do is just rub and get those so that they're nicely joined. So I'm going to keep rubbing. And I'm looking to get rid of any gaps in between all of the rectangles and smooth it over. So I've smoothed out all of the six rectangles so it's become one solid shape. So if we have a look at the difference, so you can see that becomes one sheet of the polymer clay. So what we're going to do now, just to make sure that it's nice and flat and even, and pop it back in to the cling film. And I'm going to use my two pieces of cardboard again. I'm just going to place them either side and take a little rolling pin and I'm just going to start to push down. And what this will do is going to make it nice and flat, but by having the cardboard there, it's going to mean that it's very straight as well. If I didn't have the cardboard and I put uneven pressure on, it could end up so it'd be slightly angled. So by having the, the card there, you can just roll back and forth and you know that you're going to get a nice even surface. So I've just rolled that out. And you can use either the templates or you can take cutters. So I'm just going to leave the cling film over the top and I'm going to push down and get a nice crisp shape. And take that off and open up now. So you can see I've now got my circle of the clay. And you can just run your finger around, get rid of any seam that's there. But you can see now that's given you a lovely swirly marble effect pendant. And in the same way with your panda, you can just add in the little hook at the top and it's ready for baking. So that's a good way of using up all of your last bits of your polymer clay.